Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. This is Larry Whittington with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's lesson is going to be about simplifying fractions. Fractionis. Let's check it out, ladies and gentlemen. For problem number one, I have five tenths. And when you're simplifying fractions, you're always looking for a common factor. That number that can go evenly into both the numerator and the denominator. That's right. You're looking for a number, a value, a term, something that both the numerator and the denominator can be divided evenly by. And in this case, I have a numerator of 5 and a denominator of 10. So one strategy into simplifying, reducing a fraction, is to divide both the numerator and the denominator by what they both have in common. And in this case, it's going to be the number 5. So I'll show that I'm going to divide the numerator by 5, and I'm also going to divide the denominator by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. So there's your solution. That's it. Done and done. The answer is 1 half. You got it. Another way to express this problem, ladies and gentlemen, let's say that I had that original 5 tenths. Another way to do this is to show that common factor of 5 within the numerator and the denominator. For instance, I can rewrite this as 1 times 5 divided by 2 times 5. And any time you have any number over itself when you're dealing with fractions, that number is equivalent to 1. And we can just simply cancel that out. Right. And notice what's left over is that 1 over 2, once again getting you that answer of 1 half. So you can either divide both the numerator and the denominator by that same factor of 5, or you can expand the numerator and the denominator, the top and bottom number, which allows you to simplify it into 1 half. And that's it. That's problem number 1. Okay, let's check out the next problem. Remember, when dealing with fractions, it's important to know how to simplify them because you're always asked to reduce your answer. You're always asked to give your answer in its most simplified form, especially when you're dealing with fractions. So let's check out the next problem. With 16 24 the largest factor of 16 and 24 that will go evenly into both numbers is going to be the number 8. That's right. I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 8. Okay, so 16 divided by 8 is 2 and 24 divided by 8 is 3. You're always looking for that largest factor that they have in common so therefore you won't have to keep dividing and simplifying. But if you can't see that, that's fine. For instance, if I have 16 24 and all I see is that they're both even numbers and I know that they can be divided by 2, I could start out by simplifying both the numerator and the denominator by 2. 16 divided by 2 gives me 8 and 24 divided by 2 gives me 12. However, I'm still noticing that 8 and 12 have something in common. In other words, I may see now that they can both be divided by 4. So dividing both of these numbers by 4, I'll end up with 2 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator, therefore still getting my answer of 2 thirds. So there are many ways to simplify, but the fastest way is to always divide by the largest factor that they have in common. So going back to the original setup I had, that 16 24 I divided both the numerator and the denominator by 8 because that was the largest factor that they had in common. Mm -hmm. All right, so that simplifies that problem number two. Let's move on to the next one. In problem number three, we have 12 45ths. So I know that 12 and 45 can both be divided by 3. How do I know this? If you were to add the digits of 12 together, that 1 plus 2, you would get 3. And if you add the digits of 4 and 5 together, you get 9. Any number that can be divided by 3, when you take the sum of its digits, it will be a multiple of 3. So because 1 and 2 adds to 3 and 4 plus 5 adds to 9, a multiple of 3, they can both be divided by 3. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 3. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 45 divided by 3 is 15. And that's my answer. That's it. Done and done. You got it. Once again, if I wanted to expand this to show what they're both divisible by, I can say that 12 can be rewritten as 4 times 3. I can say that 45 can be rewritten as 15 times 3. And any number over itself is 1, a.k.a. it cancels out, to give you a result of 4 
fifteenths. And that's your result there. Done and done. That was problem number three. All right, let's keep it moving. Problem number four. We have 14 sixty thirds. Well, 14 I know expands into 7 times 2. And 63 I know it expands into 7 times 9. So notice that I have that common factor of 7. Well, the 7s will cancel out and leave me with a result of 2 ninths. And that's it. Or taking that 14 sixty thirds and recognizing that they can both be divided by 7, I can have 14 divided by 7, 63 divided by 7 to give me a result of 2 ninths. Either way, there is my answer. Two nines, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. So whichever method you prefer, there you go. You can just stick with that one way and go from there. As long as you're getting the answer right, that's the important part. Problem number five, we have 25 fourths. And I can see with the last digit ending in five and zero for each of those numbers there that they can both be divided by five. Five is the common factor, that largest factor that they can both be divided by. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have 25 divided by 5. I'll show that 40 is being divided by 5. And 25 divided by 5 is 5. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. And that's it. Done and done. So as you see, ladies and gentlemen, knowing your divisibility rules are very, very important. Anytime you're dealing with numbers that end in 0 and 5, those numbers can be divided by Five. Any number that ends in zero or five can be divided by five every single time. And that's what we're dealing with. That's the answer for problem number five, five eighths. All right, in our next example, problem number six, we have, let's straighten this out. Let me straighten out my screen. Straighten out my screen. There we go. In problem number six, we have 120 divided by 144. Mm -hmm. I am familiar with 120 and 144 to know that they can both be divided by 12. Yep. Yeah, let me show you that. I can rewrite 120 as 12 times 10. And I can rewrite 144 as 12 times 12. Mm-hmm. I sure can. That being the case, ladies and gentlemen, these 12s will cancel out to leave me with 10 12s. But notice that 10 12s also has something in common. It can be divided by 2. Both of those numbers can be divided by 2. So in dividing both of these numbers by 2, all right, let's see what happens here. I end up with 5, 6, and that's going to be my final answer. So be aware of the fact that you're always responsible for checking to see if your numerator and denominator has anything in common when you're simplifying your fractions, all right? So being as though we divided by 12 first and then by 2, that meant that both of these numbers were divisible by 24. So you could have started out with your original problem. Let me show you. You have 120 over 144 and you could have said hey the largest factor is 24 yeah I mean I, I obviously didn't see that but I mean you you could have seen that 24 went to both of these numbers so 24 goes into 125 times yep and 24 goes into 144 six times and there's your answer so as I said before as long as you're paying attention to your numerator and denominator you can make sure that you have the final simplified form of your fraction by ensuring that the numerator and the denominator do not have any common factors other than one. That's right. Okay, so that's the answer, five, six. All right. Problem number seven, we have 64, 70 seconds. All right, and both 64 and 72 can be divided by eight. Yeah, that's what I see. So I'm gonna divide both of these numbers by eight. So knowing the multiples of eight comes in handy. 64 divided by eight is simply Eight and 72 divided by 8 is, you guessed it, 9. That's it. That's the answer. 8 ninths. Done and done. That's problem number 7. Let's keep it moving. All right. In our next example, we have 2126. Mm-hmm. And in 2126, ladies and gentlemen, um, yeah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah. 21 breaks down to 3 times 7, 26 breaks down into 2 times 13. This number can be simplified, ladies and gentlemen. It's already simplified. This is the answer. There are no factors other than 1 that can go evenly into 21 and into 26. This is your answer. 21, 26. So being able to recognize when a fraction is already simplified is important too, yeah? All right, so that does it for problem number eight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and this lesson was simplifying fractions. Appreciate it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's mathematic presentations. 
Did you learn anything? Do you need to review your notes? Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself. I am learning mathematicals. Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.